Good morning, dear friends. What a joy for us to be together again on this beautiful day. And before, therefore, we set out in our daily activities and today's works. Let us uh, be silent for a few minutes and listen to the voice of the Spirit. And as you listen, you will hear what the Spirit says. And may what you hear today strengthen you, encourage you, and bless you so that practicing the same, you may reap a very rich harvest as a reward from the Lord. Today's meditation is actually taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1, where we read about the grace of giving. And Apostle Paul says, And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. In the midst of very severe trial, their overflowing joy and extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. What a marvelous verse and what a message that the Holy Spirit wants to convey to us. The number one things I would like to consider is, consider their circumstance. It was extreme poverty. That's what it says. These people were going through severe trials and severe famine kind of poverty. And that means they did not have en uh, enough to meet both ends meet. Oh Lord, what a generosity these people have shown. Your circumstance may never allow you to do anything for God. But I have good news. His grace will enable you to do something and greater things that you can imagine for God, for His glory. That how His grace, His enabling grace, and His enabling and divine grace is so powerful. They gave gladly out of their poverty. That's what it says. Paul did not preach a prosperity gospel, neither did he believe in such kind of a gospel. But on the other hand, he preached the gospel of grace which enabled a believer to be, um, to be, to be uh, content with whatever he has and then at the same time be generous in giving unto the Lord. How do you do that? How do you give to God? By giving to those who are in need around you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ enables us to have overflowing joy in the midst of a severe trial. And that is the wonder and marvel of His grace. So let us not take the grace of God very lightly, my brothers and sisters. It is a divine grace that enables you to do something that you otherwise will never be able to accomplish or do. That is what God expects you to trust His grace. And the second thing I want you to notice here is the enriching grace. First it was enabling grace. Not, now uh, let us look into the enriching grace. The believers in Macedonia gave as if they were very rich. Very rich in in their material blessings. And uh, they, they have shown to the world that uh, they have uh, plenty and abundance of material blessings while they themselves are going through poverty kind of situation. They were truly rich. Abundant joy and abundant liberality. 
Their example was the gospel according to St. Mark chapter 12, verses uh, 41 to 44, where we read about Jesus was in a synagogue and he was standing near uh, the box where people would bring their offerings and put their offerings. And he was watching. And while he was watching, there came a very old elderly widow, a poor looking widow. And she put in uh, two very small coins. And Jesus commanded, Others gave out of their abundance, but this woman gave all she had for her living. You see, people who go through extreme poverty kind of situation, in their giving, they usually are very, very extreme generous. They give in such a way as if they are very rich. And uh, they gave, the Macedonian churches, people gave, um, uh, until it hurts. And uh, overflowing kindness produced in them a boundless joy. Poor in possession and rich in generosity. And so another thing I want you to notice here is the quality of their giving. And it says here, beyond what they were able. And that means they were giving even what they did not have. How it is, I don't know. Beyond what they were able to give, they gave. And that is the quality of their giving. In this chapter and the next chapter, chapter 9 of 2 Corinthians, contain the most extensive teaching uh, about Christian giving found in the New Testament. These teachings are a guide for uh, believers and churches for all time. And, and, and let me mention a few of these principles of giving mentioned here. Number one, we belong to God. And what we have is held as a trust for our God. Verse 5. That's what you must realize about what you have, your riches, whatever you have. It is all kept as a trust for God. And number two, we must make the basic decision in our hearts to serve God and not money. And this is a mistake that many people make. They, they think they are serving money. No, we don't serve money. We serve our God. And when you serve God, you give Him the best and all that you have. And you bless Him by giving all. And uh, you read in connection with this Matthew chapter 6 verse 24 and Galatians chapter 6 verse 12. Please read these references after our meditation time. And number three, we give for what? In order to help the needy people around us. You know, read the same chapter, verse 14, 2 Corinthians 8, verse 14, and then chapter 9, verse 12. These verses reveal how important it is for us to be considerate for, for the needy people. And fourthly, giving should be the proof of our love for the Lord and for people. Your love for God must be reflected in your giving love for the people around you. And that's why Jesus, I mean, John says in his epistle, if you say you love God and yet you do not love your brother, you are a liar. 
everyone who loves God must be a reflector. And uh, you must reflect your love for God by your love for brethren. And let us always remember and take God's word very seriously into our heart. And so these are some of the principles of a Christian giving. And that is how we have orphanages. We have charitable works. We have so many good things going on. Many people are doing sacrificially, not only giving, but sacrificially uh, serving. And another thing to notice is the freedom of their action. They did not need to be told or exhorted to give. They did it of themselves, freely and cheerfully. And that is what they, that's the way they gave. It is not the actual uh, size of the gift but the attitude with which you give. And so what God is looking at is not the size of the gift, but it is the attitude of the giver. And you must have the right motive in giving. You give not expecting a larger amount in return. No. Many people are lured into giving to certain ministries because the preachers stand up and say, if you sow your money into my ministry, you are going to be blessed and your business is going to be doubled and your income is going to be doubled and you are going to get an increase and all these sort of things they say. And thus, if you, if you, if you, if you have only 1,000 rupees in your pocket, you put the whole thing because you think that by giving, doing so, you are going to get 2,000 rupees before you reach home. And my brothers and sisters, let us not be fooled. And let us be wise. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, it says, and uh, listen to this, this is a marvelous word. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that in all things, abound to you so that in all things at all times having all that you need you will abound in every good work and therein lies your blessings and your reward and so please read it at home when you are alone and just seriously meditate Give a, to a, a few minutes of meditation on this. Believers who give what they can to help those in need will find that God's grace provides a sufficiency for their own needs and even more. Take this to heart. I will repeat it one more time. Believers who give what they can to help those in need will find that God's grace provides a sufficiency for your own needs and even more. God's grace is able to accomplish it. And you will never be a loser by giving to God. You will only be a gainer. And the only investment you have for eternity is what you do in the name of Jesus. The, every penny that you give to someone who is in need, it is an investment in the kingdom of God. And so my friends, let us take these principles of Christian giving. Let us be good givers even in our extreme difficulties that we face ourselves. But let us be very generous in giving to God. Hallelujah. What a joy it will bring. There will be an overflowing joy you will experience the more you give. God bless you. And I pray that today you will find opportunities before you 
to be a blessing to somebody. You meet someone who is in need. And God has to put some money in your purse. Perhaps it is for you. Don't hesitate to give it. God's blessing be upon you. And may the Lord abound his... May the, may the Lord cause the grace be multiplied in your life. This is my prayer. And God bless you. Amen. This is a great day. Have a wonderful day. Amen.